West Foot and Ankle in Portland, Oregon. Uh, Dr. Ray McClanahan here today with two of my teammates. Uh, Jameson will be shooting the video and Kayla will be uh, directing the video. Of all the videos that we've done for you folks over the years, we're, we're quite excited about the one that we're going to be doing for you today. Um, we're doing one today on shoe sizing. And uh, one of the important fundamentals about shoe sizing is the reality that no matter what foot problem you're encountering, it's likely to be related to the size of your shoe. So let's, let's dive right in today. Um, today we're going to be talking about the conventional method of fitting shoes, which is known as the Brannock device. This device was created in Syracuse, New York in 1927. There is a female-specific version and a male-specific version. Uh, just a little bit of a, an introduction to this device for those of you that are not familiar with it. The device gives you three measurements of your foot. The first measurement is an overall length measurement, which is offered in a number. Um, the second measurement is the overall length of your arch. Um, and perhaps here in a moment we can actually show you these measurements being, being taken. The third measurement that this device gives one is the width of the foot. Uh, and that is given in letters, A, B, C, D, double E, triple E, etc. Um, there is some value in having the length of your foot in the shoe sizing experience. There's also some value for some people in knowing the length of their arch so that the shoe will bend at the right spot. But what we really want to focus on today is the concern that we have here at our clinic for the width measurement that's given with this device. Unfortunately, the width, width measurement that's given in the letters corresponds to the ball of your foot. And uh, unfortunately, if you fit your footwear based on the width being at the ball of your foot, you're likely to need to come visit us at Northwest Foot and Ankle or see some other kind of foot care provider. Uh, a historical perspective on human feet is that nearly 100% of us are born with the widest part of our feet, the ends of our toes. These are my daughter's footprints. Um, most of you viewing this video were also born like this. A lot of people are not convinced that they were born with the widest part of their foot, the ends of their toes. So I always urge people to go look at their birth certificate and you'll, you'll likely be able to confirm that you were widest out here at the ends of the toes. What's interesting about that is, is in most industrialized societies, we make shoes for infant feet that are properly shaped with the width measurement at the ends of the toes instead of at the ball. But shortly after about age one, some negative things begin to happen and we begin changing the shape of our natural human feet by buying shoes that are widest at the ball. I had the good fortune of uh, receiving this box of JC Penney baby shoes that my running coach Jamin Awesome had when he was a little boy. And interestingly in America this is the only shoe sizing guide that I've seen that respects natural human foot anatomy. If you can see what I'm holding up here the width measurement that is given for baby shoes is widest at the ends of the toes and not at the ball of the foot. So in America and in most other industrialized societies, we have it, we have it uh, proper up until about age one, but the whole reason for this video today is what happens to all of us after about age one and why might that end up uh, becoming a problem for you. We're conditioned in America when we have a foot problem to want to know what our diagnosis is or want the doctor to push on our tender spot and tell us what our treatment is. And although those things are important and valuable, overwhelmingly much more important for you is to know whether or not your footwear is actually matching the natural shape of your human foot. So we're going to talk briefly about um, a better method today of fitting your footwear. It's known as the sock liner test. Some people call it the shoe liner test, also known as the insole test. And that is a way that you can actually guarantee that you're going to get a proper uh, measurement of your foot where it's naturally supposed to be widest, which is at the ends of the toes. So recently I had the good fortune of attending what is known as the Footwear Innovation Summit down in Los Angeles. I attended that meeting with a good friend of mine who is a shoe designer uh, who is interested in footwear and healthier footwear like I am. Uh, we were eager to meet the people at this conference and learn what was new and in the, in the world of shoe fitting and footwear innovation, 3D scanning is new. Um, so we were very interested to meet some company representatives from some companies that actually have a new way of measuring your feet, 
where they actually have you stand on a platform and uh, the camera captures a 3D image of your foot. Um, we were fairly excited about this. We got our own scans taken. Unfortunately, what we discovered was that the uh, company that did our foot scans, Volumental, um, unfortunately is corresponding to uh, a, a computerized version of the Brannock device. So in other words, when we had our feet scanned, the width measurement of our feet was still at the ball of the feet. So in a moment here, I'm going to demonstrate how to use this device. I'll measure my own foot, and I'll show what number and letter we arrive at from this device. Then we'll show you the foot scan that I had done at Volumental. And interestingly, uh, we came up with the same number with both the Brannock device and the Volumental measurements. However, both of them were uh, erroneous measurements, and you'll quickly realize why when we show you some of the visuals. Most importantly, we'll wrap the video up today with a, uh, a better way for you and your family to fit your footwear. Next, we're going to demonstrate how to use the Brannock device. Um, if you're going to get fitted for shoes, you want to make sure that you get fitted towards the end of your day, end of the day, as your feet will be bigger and, and uh, a little bit more swollen. You also want to make sure that you're weight bearing on your foot. So you'll notice when I when I put my foot in the Brannock measuring device, I'm going to stand up because our feet get longer and wider when we stand. So the device. Uh, appropriately used will give an overall length measurement of my foot. So my left foot, my overall length measurement is in between 10 and a half and 11. So that's a valuable measurement. That kind of gives you a baseline number to operate from when you're in the store. However, as I mentioned, we'll give you a better method here in just a moment. The second portion of the Brannock device measures the arch length, which is highly variable. And occasionally this can be important to make sure that you choose a shoe that bends where your uh, metatarsal heads bend. So that's what this little raised metal piece is here. If you lift up your big toe, you find out where the joint is, that little metal slot should line up perfectly with the top of your joint. My arch length is 11. So the overall foot length is 10 and a half, arch length is 11. You always take the larger of these two numbers for your size. Now here's where things start to go wrong. Once I have my overall foot length, once I have my arch length, as I mentioned, I take the greater of those two numbers, which is 11. I come over to the width measurement on the side with this pushed up against the side of my foot. I find 11, which is here, and it says that I'm supposed to be between a D width and an E width shoe. However, we're going to show you how my foot actually fits on a double E width shoe and you'll quickly realize why if you want to have healthy feet you do not want to use the Brannock device for measuring the width of your foot you'll want to use your sock liner test which we'll go into next. So let's pretend that we walked into the store we got our measurements here our length and our width this tells me I should be looking for approximately 10 and a half to an 11. Uh, this particular shoe here happens to be a 10 and a half double E. So corresponding to the measurements that I received from the Brannock, which are the same measurements that I received from the Volumental, if I pull the removable piece, the sock liner or the insole out, and I stand on that, we're going to quickly see that if I want my foot to be in natural position, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, widest at the ends of the toes, this shoe will not let that, will not let my foot do that. This shoe will try to squeeze my foot into that configuration. I spent many years in that configuration, ironically actually sponsored by this shoe company, but I had a lot of foot problems. So it's not just athletic shoes. We can also look at comfort shoes, casual shoes, dress shoes, professional shoes, happens to be a rock port, common shoe for men, size 10 and a half wide, corresponding to my measurements here. You can again see that if I want my foot to be naturally positioned, which is our natural state and the healthiest way the foot can position itself, this shoe is going to try to squeeze my toes in and hold my toes in a triangular configuration. The reason why it does that is the sock liner, also known as the insole, is the same shape as the upper. So if you see your foot doing this on a sock liner in a shoe, you can guarantee that this portion of the shoe is going to be actively trying to deform your big toe and actively trying to deform your, your little toe. 
If you do that for long enough, you'll develop foot problems and you'll need to see the doctor. So um, if we continue to use the sock liner test, this is actually a natural shoe made by Lems. You'll notice it's not widest at the ball. It's widest at the ends of the toes. If I happen to be looking at this shoe in the shoe store and put my correct toes on and stand on this, you'll notice that it corresponds to the, to the shape of my natural foot. Now you'll notice that my pinky is t going off maybe a millimeter over here, which is not gonna be a big deal because this material is very soft and flexible. However, if I were to try to wear one of these shoes, um, I would be in pain probably within a few minutes. So this is an example of the sock liner test, also known as the shoe liner test or insole test. And currently in the world, this is the very best way for choosing your foot size.